morning everybody on the Polaris again today um, and today dad's giving me a hand I'm gonna try and get this engine gearbox in that rear um, drive assembly all out of the frame today and uh, hopefully if any luck might be able to pull a little bit of the engine apart to have a look what's going on inside but we'll see how we go um, so we won't muck around we'll just tear straight into it as I was saying from the last video we have to disassemble most of the um, control arms on the rear axle um, so we can undo the mounts on the engine and then slide it all back out because you can't lift it up through the chassis because it's how it's welded um, so we need to undo control arms and the drive shafts will probably have to come out um, yeah but we'll worry about that when we get to it so we'll just tear into it straight away all right so i just finished undoing all the wiring harness that goes into the engine here it goes all up under this front cover. There's like three different plugs you need to unplug. And Dad's just working on pulling the exhaust pipe off the front there. And he's pulled the muffler off as well. So while he's doing that, I might make a start on just undoing some of the bracketry all around this rear axle here. Where I might actually just start, I actually might just start undoing the mounts on the chassis first. And get them sort of undone. So that we're sort of half ready to pull it out. All right, so just done the engine mount, undone one engine mount down there. And there's a second one. Just there. So that's all the engine mounts on for the on the actual chassis undone. So what we're gonna do, we were looking at it just then. See right there. The torch must be gone flat, but um, there's two bolts there that join the rear assembly of the chassis to the front end. So we're going to put some blocks under it, undo that. And then that means that if when we undo the top of the springs, this whole assembly will just wheel back with the engine. Um, and it should be a bit easier than having, pulling all the control arms and everything apart. And then that'll still be all joined up and we might be able to just work on it um, without having to put it on the bench. So. We'll put some blocks under there, undo, separate the chassis, and that should sort of fold down. We'll rest on the blocks, and then we'll undo the top of the springs up there, and then we should be able to roll it back. All right, so I've undone the bolts down here that undo, that separate the bottom of the chassis in half. So now, we're gonna undo the tops of the springs. So there's two bolts, each one on each side. Undo those. And then we'll undo this bolt here and there's another bolt also on the other side and that'll undo this bracket here which joins to the chassis and then that should all spring up uh, hopefully these springs don't have too much spring in them as it is and um that shouldn't go too high and then once that's undone we should be able to roll the engine in the gearbox this rear axle should all just roll back um, with a little bit of wriggling hopefully and then that'll be all out of the chassis and we might be able to just work on it as it is but we'll still pull these control arms and the drive shafts out because they need to be done so we'll undo this stuff now and then roll it back
put that little trolley jack underneath it and wheelie put yeah, it over the front. Yeah. Put it under where it falls. All right, as you see, we've been uh, just separated the uh, engine and gearbox and whatnot from the front half there. So that's all ready to go. We just had to, where the drive shaft for the front axle hooks up, we just had to spray a bit of stuff in there and give it a whack with a hammer to free it. And we disconnected the brake line that comes off there and runs under it as well. And that's just sitting on top with all this. So now that's all separated, I might start disassembling up here and we'll see what goes on there and um, try and get some of that apart. All right, so now that the engine's out, we can get a clear, a uh, bit of clear access to it. Uh, start by just pulling this top cover off. Now I know there's a timing chain in there and it all sets up somehow, but as I said, I'm not really 100% sure what I'm doing. I'm just sort of gonna pull it apart and see what we find. And I sort of had a little bit of a look last night on a website that does that has parts catalogs for this and I'll sort of look at the exploded view but I don't have a manual for this so um, I'll try and hunt one up but I'll just take my time pull it apart and we'll see what we find so I'll pull this top cover off first and uh, we'll go from there Didn't have to try very hard. Bit of gunk on there, it doesn't look too bad. It's not, inside's not black, so that's one thing. All right, so I've been playing around for a few minutes now. There's the inside of the um, rocker housing. You can see the rockers there, the cams down the bottom, obviously. There's the timing chain. So what I've been doing is, I've just been like roll, turning the engine over. So basically, if you see down the bottom there, there's a two marks. Um, I'm there, what I'm assuming are the timing marks. So I've spanned it around quite a few times, and you'll see where that coloured bit of chain is, but I've coloured in and made a mark. That bit of chain was a different colour to all the rest of the chain. It was more silver than black. So I assume that that is, needs to be lining up with there as well. Um, uh, if it's not exactly right, if I line that all up the way it is now, when I pull it up, when I put it back together, I should be okay still. Uh, I've got it on top to dead center, so both the uh, rockers there have that little bit of free play in them, where the you would make your adjustment. So that's top dead center, and they're on the rock. So 
they're both loose. <clears throat> so I think technically it should be right to uh, loosen this chain adjuster, which is over here. And then try and get this chain off and then undo that bolt there. Uh, and um, hopefully that'll slide, or, slide off okay. We might be able to, well, if I can get the chain off and get it past there, might have to pull the cam off. The cam will slide out. Same with this bloody rocker pin as well. The shaft just isn't even held in there by anything. Literally the rocker cover holds that shaft in place. So I'll have a little bit of a play around and um, see how I'm gonna go again this chain off. And I'll let you know what I did and how to do it once I've done it. All right, everybody. So what I've done, the timing chain's now off. What I did was there's a, um, the tensioner, which is this thing here, presses on a little, oh, I don't know what you could really call it, but it's like a plastic guard that pushes on the chain and keeps it tight. This is spring loaded. That just slips in there. So I undid that to take the tension off the chain. And with it all set up, undid the bolt there and the washer and whatnot that was, uh, well, undid the chain off. I just like lifted it off. Then it was loose, undid that bolt, and then the chains just dropped down there, which that's fine, they can just stay there for now. So now I'm ready to undo these head bolts and we'll try and lift this head off and then we'll be able to see what's going on inside it. Oh, as you saw, just undid the um, four head bolts. We just had to just hold it while I lifted it off. I had a quick little peek at the bottom there, it didn't look too bad on the valves. I'll have a closer look there in a minute. Uh, top of the piston looks pretty clean, as you can see. So that's one thing, hopefully, uh, well, yeah, hoping it's pretty bloody scored in there so we can actually have a, uh, make sure that it's actually, that's the problem. So we've pulled it apart and that's not the problem. It's gonna be a little, little bit embarrassing. But I'll uh, undo the rest of this cylinder uh, unit and then I'll pull that off and then we'll be able to have a good look at the piston and the sleeve. All right, so I've got the cylinder off. Looks pretty good in there, so. That's right, ringing a few alarm bells for me because I expected it to see that be scored like crazy, but it's not. Well, we'll have to keep having a look, see what we can find. All right, so here's the um, head, cylinder, piston. So I've got it all out and apart now. You can see, well, basically, get a torch. Maybe you see down there, there looks like there's a bit of pitting and rust marks. I think some water got in there at one point. Can't see much scoring. I can still see cross hatching, which is a good sign. And if we look at the piston as well, I can't know, I'm not noticing anything that jumps out to me as a sign of why to be using so much oil and sucking it up through the cylinder and the head looks all right i don't know if these valves are leaking or not there's a lot of um built up carbon on the exhaust valve and uh yeah i'm not really sure if they're leaking or not i need to somehow work it if i get these tested so that sort of leaves us at the point now where i'm gonna need to um i'll take those in to work with me talk to one of my mates who's pretty good with motorbikes and um talk about what i should do next that cylinder might be saveable, maybe I'll just give it a hone and that may be good enough and we might be able to just chuck some rings on that piston, that could be it. I don't know if there's too much, if it's sucking all past that 
those rings if it's been worn out to the point where it's able to actually suck some up even though it's not badly scored in the cylinder and um, yeah so it's just gonna need a little bit more time to investigate it I think and um, come up with a plan and try and work out why so much oil will be getting passed hopefully it's just the rings um, yeah as I said I don't want to have pulled it apart for no reason like there's no other explanation as to why we're getting oilless it's leaking oil in past the valves um, which I'll have to somehow work out how to test that if those valve stem seals are leaking um, yeah so anybody has got any thoughts or ideas um, chuck a comment as I said the main problem with this is it's using so much oil we have to top it up with oil every single time we use it and it's not just an oil leak somewhere leaking under the ground it's blowing out of the exhaust. Um, a lot of smoke coming off it, so we know that it's actually burning the oil out. And like the cylinder is like, and the piston was so clean. So obviously, some going on there. Just can't quite put my finger on. It. But we'll have to, uh, yeah, sort something out. So it might be a little while before the next episode with uh, this motorbike because I'll have to organise parts and. Um, come up with what the problem is so maybe a couple of weeks might be a month or so um, yeah but we'll definitely we'll be putting it back together obviously <laughs> so we'll leave it there any comments any questions um, it was a really simple pulling it apart once I got once we got that rolled away from the body it was dead easy getting that apart I think I got it pretty right with the, how it's timed um, hopefully yeah there are any dramas down the track I don't think I will it was pretty simple uh, there wasn't really much to it, so it was like with the Yamaha engine, if I didn't have to split that engine to uh, redo the gearbox, that would have been a real simple rebuild as well. And just before I finish up here, I did check the cotter pin and the bearing in the uh, bottom end of that piston, uh, the rod. Um, there's no movement in there and it doesn't seem to be anywhere. Also checked what I could see on the cam lobes, doesn't seem to be much, well, oh, there's a very slight wear like a little bit of wear marks but nothing to worry about nothing that would be causing an issue and because um yeah the rollers looked all good so we'll leave this episode here as i said any comments any questions um if you've got a manual for one of these it's a 2008 sportsman 300 polaris uh you got a manual for one of these i would love to get my hands on one so let me know yeah and just chuck a comment down below um yeah, so we'll finish up there. You know the gist. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll catch you in the next one. All right.